Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert. I'm here today with the Moto G8 Power Lite, a smartphone that was a bit of a surprise when it was unveiled just a couple of weeks ago. You see, it's only a month or two since the Moto G8 Power went on sale and it was a little bit of a letdown because it was just overpriced, it was over £200, whereas the original G7 Power of course came in at that sort of 160 170 mark and the battery life wasn't quite as good because it had a full HD screen, wasn't quite as energy efficient. The G8 Power Lite is more the smartphone that I expected the G8 Power to be. It's once again a 5000 a milliamp piece but this time around you've got 720p display so it should be a little bit more power efficient and it comes in at 150 quid so definitely far more affordable than the standard G8 power. So is this a case of Motorola correcting its mistake? Well who even knows. What we're going to do now is fully unbox the Moto G8 power light, get it all set up and take you on a tour of the hardware and software so you know what to expect. So we've got all the usual boring readme shenanigans, warranty information, yada yada yada. You've got your porky pin device, of course, to actually get your SIM in there. You've got your micro USB charging cable. Yeah, sorry kiddies, no type C USB action here. It is that damn dirty micro USB blech. And then of course, good old three pin plug, trusty as ever. And that's your whack, that's everything in the box. And as you can see, of course, the Moto G8 Power Lite does actually come clad in its very own condom case as well so you've got that as a bonus little extra just to help protect your smartphone from damage if you want it and there unsheathed is the Moto G8 Power Lite in its full naked glory. I quite like the blue finish here on the back end as you can see it's got a gradient style finish kind of similar to a lot of budget smartphones sort of quite dark blue up towards the top and then morphs into the sort of lighter blue towards the bottom very snazzy. It is a plastic finish as you would kind of expect at the £150 price point. To be honest I'm getting so sick of glass smartphones that anything different is actually quite refreshing. The Moto G8 Power Lite weighs in at 200 grams precisely according to the official Motorola specs so definitely got a good heft to it that's for sure it doesn't feel toy like or anything and it's 6.5 inches as well so it is a bit of a hand filler. Now, according to the box this is the royal blue variant of the Moto G8 Power Lite but if you're not a fan you can also pick it up in arctic blue uh, so I just hope you like blue really. There's no pre-installed screen protector unfortunately here on the G8 Power Lite but at least you do get that rubber cover uh, bundled in there if you just want to add a bit of extra protection and apparently the Moto G8 Power Lite is also uh, water repellent as well so splash resistant basically it'd be all right if you accidentally spill a bit of your pint on it something like that just don't go taking it in the bath or the shower anything like that all right let's see if we've got any power in there yes we do beautiful so let's get this some bitch set up and i can take you on a full-on tour of the rest of the hardware and the software hello moto oh god hallucinogenic intro as always all of the acids love it all righty so the moto g8 power light is all set up and ready for action it's just busy installing all my apps and everything in the background so let's run through the os first of all so first up unfortunately as you can see there the moto g8 power light is still stuck on android version 9 which is a bit of a crime really in 2020 especially this far into 2020 really should expect android version 10 even on budget smartphones hopefully that'll get an update soon uh, and as you can see the security patches are a couple of months behind as well but at least as with usual with the model of the smartphone you do get a nice stock version of android here so you've got your discover feed got your apps tree all the usual bog standard stuff unfortunately here on the model g8 power Lite, there is no moto experiences app to add some bonus gesture support like the one-handed mode bits like that which is a real shame especially that, that one-handed mode is so helpful when you've got a 6.5 inch beast like the g8 power Lite, just to help you reach up to the top end of the screen at least you can pull down the notifications bar from anywhere just with a swipe down on your desktops but you know when you're actually in an app or something like that it's so nice to be able to just put it in one-handed mode uh, when you need to. So let's take a closer look at that display as I mentioned of course 6.5 inch beast uh, it's an IPS panel as of course all budget smartphones are and it packs a 720p resolution so it's a little bit uh, scaled back compared with the standard Moto G8 power uh, but that 720p resolution is still reasonably sharp despite the size of that panel. If you're getting close yes things do look a little bit softer obviously compared to a full HD resolution display but it'll still be absolutely fine for enjoying a little bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever on the go. This is on pretty much maximum brightness right now so not one of the most powerful uh, panels around. You might struggle a little bit if you're looking at it outside for instance trying to uh, watch a bit of moody Marvel action or something like that but certainly viewing angles and everything else seem absolutely fine and the colours are sort of all right. Not Nothing particularly vibrant or in your face but again it's a budget smartphone what do you expect. As for the display controls in the uh, Moto G power light settings well you've got control over the temperature and that's pretty much it so you make things warmer or cooler 
folder. I'll just stick with the default as uh, so there's no uh, vibrant, vivid mode or anything like that. As for the Moto G8 Powerlite's audio, well, the speaker, the mono speaker, is actually housed around here on the back end of the blower rather than down on the bottom edge where it's traditionally found. And of course, this means when you're watching a video, it's all the more easy to accidentally muffle it if you uh, aren't holding it in just the right way. Um, but the actual output itself seems absolutely fine on top volume, certainly nice and loud. Messages, your apps, your important stuff from your old smartphone to the new one. You are actually given the option of doing this during the OnePlus. So despite that audio being actually directed away from your face and your lug holes, it's coming through nice and uh, clear on that top volume. And you've also got a bit of Bluetooth 4.2 support if you want to hook up to a pair of wireless headphones or a speaker or whatever. And yes, there is a headphone jack housed up top here on this blower as well. So yeah, it is a shame that you don't have the latest Bluetooth 5 support on here, uh, but more importantly, uh, if you want to be using a bit of Android P or anything like that with your smartphone, there is no NFC support here on the Moto G at Powerlite. That got stripped off in order to save a bit of cost action. So yeah, no NFC, no wireless payment, no contactless anything. Now running the show here on the G at Powerlite is a MediaTek chipset. It's the Helio P35, and it's backed by four gigs of RAM. So it'll be fine for your everyday shenanigans, a bit of web browsing, checking your messages, you know, streaming a bit of media, things like that, absolutely fine. You will no doubt see a fair few little stutters and stammers as you're going about your everyday business, but hopefully nothing too dramatic, especially as you've got four gigs of RAM in there. That should help to keep things ticking over smoothly. Uh, I do have a good bit of PUBG mobile on here. You should just about be able to get through a game of that, but it will be on low detail settings at best. And I certainly would not expect the silky smoothest of frame rates. I'll be doing a full review on the Moto G at Powerlight anyway, so stay tuned for my full thoughts on that once I've had a proper chance to test it out. Or in other words, had the chance to have my arse handed to me repeatedly by a bunch of 12 year olds who are now practicing this game more than ever because they don't have to go to school anymore. Thanks virus. Well, the good news is if you are going to be doing a lot of media streaming, gaming, anything like that, well you should be able to do that all day long because you've got a mighty 5000 milliamp battery packed inside this thing just like last year's brilliant G7 power and of course the new Moto G8 power as well. The G8 power didn't last quite as long as the G7 power because I guess they bumped up the specs a bit. The platform wasn't quite as energy efficient. Of course, you had that full HD display, which helped to uh, sap the battery a bit faster as well. Hopefully here on the G8 Power Lite, it will last the full two to three days that we saw in last year's G7 Power. Of course, you've got the usual battery saver modes and everything as well. And uh, as far as the fast charge goes, I believe it's 10 watt charging here on the Moto G8 Power Lite. So not the swiftest. Uh, you might want to sort of leave it charging overnight. And on the storage front, you've got 64 gigs as standard. But you do have micro SD memory card support in there as well, up to 256 gigs. So plenty of space there for all your media and whatnot. And if you pop open the Moto G8 Power Lite SIM tray, the good news is you've got space on there for dual SIM support, two SIMs at once, and also there's a separate tray for your micro SD memory cards. You don't have to choose whether you want two SIMs or a SIM and a memory card. Lovely. Now before we get on to the camera tech, just the final feature to talk about here on the Moto G8 Power Lite is that rear-mounted physical fingerprint sensor. As you can see, it's just slightly indented in the surface there to make it easier to find when you pull the Moto G8 Power Lite out of your pocket and you're fumbling around for it blindly. And it ain't too lethargic for a budget blow fingerprint sensor either, so a quick tap now. And as you see, within about a second or so, you are into your desktop, so not too bad at all. It certainly seems plenty uh, accurate as well, no uh, read errors or anything like that. So now last up, let's check out Motorola's camera tech. And yes, it is a triple lens rear setup here on the Moto G8 Power Lite, but of course, don't exactly expect the moon on a stick. This is a 150 pound smartphone. So it's a 16 megapixel primary lens, f2.0 with phase detection autofocus. So hopefully the autofocus should be reasonably reliable. Uh, the actual photo capture itself, I'm expecting to be fairly basic. I'll probably struggle in HDR situations, even though you do have an auto HDR mode there. Uh, as you see, the processing time doesn't seem to be too bad. You've also, of course, got some portrait smarts. You've got full control over the bokeh action, so you can increase that or decrease that, depending on how much blur you want in the background. And that'll be using the two megapixel depth sensor just to get accurate edge detection. And then last up on that triple lens setup is a two megapixel macro lens. I still don't see the point in these at all. Quite good, I guess, if you want pictures of ants and bees and things. We also have a panorama mode and if we swap to the video mode I believe this tops off yes at full HD resolution there's obviously no 4k again as you would kind of expect from a 150 pound budget smartphone and the rest of the settings fairly basic too. And then around front in the little nipple notch there you have an 8 megapixel front facing camera let's just uh, see how this one fares. So you can shoot up to full HD video once again and of course you've got uh, your bit of uh, portrait smarts as well if you wanted to uh, 
do a bit of background blur action once again. Of course, there's no depth sensor up front, so it's just using software smarts for that one. And yeah, you know what? That seems to do a reasonable enough job right there. Once again, of course, an absolute keeper of a photo. Look at that sexy hunk. And that right there, in a nutshell, is the new Motorola Moto G8 Power Lite. Quite an unexpected handset in the end, but hopefully it'll prove to have that extended battery life we loved from the G7 Power from last year and at that more affordable price point as well. So stay tuned for a full in-depth Motorola Moto G8 Power review. I've already reviewed the standard G8 Power, so go check out that, as well as the G8 Plus. And I'm planning on doing a big old fat G8 family comparison as well. So the G8 versus the G8 Power Lite versus the G8 Power versus the G8 Plus. Lots of G series uh, shenanigans there. So stay tuned for all of that fun and games as well. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell so you don't miss out. And have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.